Hello everyone. So if you wanted to get good guiding from your PHD2 software, follow these simple steps. You should be able to get a pretty good guiding and uh, a low RMS error if you follow these simple steps. Let's get into the details of PHD2. So PHD guiding is a very big topic. PHD guiding will let you increase your exposure time for your exposures so that you can take a lot longer exposures to capture more details in the astrophotography pictures. The PHD guiding is an open source software. It's available on this website openphdguiding.org. It's available on Windows and Mac as well. The default PHD settings are pretty good. There are two ways you could, uh, you could guide your guide star. On your main scope, you can put a guide scope and you can put a guide camera. And then while your main scope and your main scope's camera is taking pictures, the guide scope and the guide camera are going to guide this guide star that you select and will make sure your go-to mount is having enough corrections so that the guide star will remain in the frame that you are looking at. If there are any tracking correction errors, the guide scope and the guide camera will send the corrections to your mount. I think that is the most common way people use guiding. You can also have an off-axis guider rather than having a guide scope and you can have an off-axis guider and a guide camera within your image frame and you could also perform absolutely the same guide star uh, from your uh, frame and still image properly. Step number two, download Stellarium software on your machine, whether it is Windows, Mac. So why am I downloading Stellarium software? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Step three, configure your PHD software. Okay, so when you start PHD2, this is the kind of screen that you would see. Uh, you can, you know, move these panels. Uh, you may have a different layout, that should be fine. The first things first, so you, you have a connect button here. So when you click on connect, you have to select your camera. So the camera that you are selecting here, you could select the third party software that they provide or the ASCOM software that your camera provides. This is your guide camera. The mount, you would select your mount software or the ASCOM software for your mount. Once you select these two, you could connect. But typically, the first thing that you would do is you go into this button called Manage Profiles and you click on New. So when you click on New, it will give you like a name and profile settings with the initial defaults. And once you set these up, it will ask you, hey, give me your camera name and the mount name, right? So I already created one profile name here. So I selected the, for that profile, this is my camera and this is the mount. The most important thing is the settings that you would use. By default, these are the settings that you would see for your PHD2. Some of these settings, I did change them. So the, most of these settings are pretty basic and default. So you don't need to change a whole lot. So this is your software update. You wanted to check the updates automatically. This is your log file location. PHD creates a log file. I think for each day it will create like one file. And you could use a software called PHD log file viewer. You can download it from the same PHD website and look at your log files. Enable the diagnostic image logging. I did not turn this on. It was not on in the first place. Dither, I'm still working on this part. I'm testing it. If you just wanted to start dithering, then 
either you can do either one of these i was told do the random dithering scale i'm not sure whether this 1.2 is a good number or a 1 is a good number or 20 is a good number i don't know yet but right now i'm playing with it but to start off with use either 1 or 1.2 it should be fine so this dithering is a very big topic so when you stack your pictures the dithering will make the frame from each frame it moves to the right to the left or to the up or to the down so once the stacking process is complete any unwanted pixels or noise gets reduced that is the very easier explanation of dithering so you may wanted to dither your pictures to avoid the noise from your uh, astrophotography pictures now going into the camera so i selected the noise reduction 2 by 2 auto exposure 1 second and 5 second the target signal to noise ratio i selected 6 these are the default values and then the pixel size i selected here the pixel size as 5.2 i believe I don't know why it came back to 24 but anyway so 5.2 that's what that number is it's very very critical to make sure you are in fact selecting the right pixel size for your camera so if you want to go to the you know the website of that camera make sure you put the right pixel I think that's critical now if you go to the guiding the next tab the search region I think this is default 15 star mass detection you enable it to the tolerance of 50 these numbers ideally you don't need to play a whole lot with but unless you have a huge problem besides the camera pixel size another important thing that you need to make sure is you need to put the focal length of your of your guide scope now if you are doing off axis guiding your focal length will be the focal length of your main imaging camera uh, and if you have a reducer make sure whatever is the focal length with the reducer if you have a guide scope which is a separate scope on top of your telescope then the focal length is the focal length of your guide scope the reason this is critical is this calibration steps are calculated by the system automatically it looks over at your focal length looks at your pixel size couple of other things and then basically calculates your calibration step automatically so you don't want to change this number this setting auto restore calibration is good to turn it on use the deck compensation i think i turned it on based on some reading that i did it's better to have it shared parameters always scale your images uh, these are defaults fast recenter after the calibration is complete enable the mount guide output i think these are defaults leave them on algorithms i think you can copy these i'm not an expert to talk about this stuff but keep this as it is on no big deal use a bubble level to make sure the tripod is properly balanced before you put the mount on the tripod the newer mounts have a bubble level on the mount itself as well as one on the tripod you need to make sure that is there it's not crucial but it is important enough you have to balance your mount both on the RA axis and the deck axis on the RA axis you will find telescope on one side and weights on the other side you need to make sure when you apply pressure on the telescope or when you apply pressure on the weights the pressure is the same between those two so you know like it is appropriately balanced or you lift it up on one side and you lift it up on the other you kind of should feel the balance is there if you notice there is too much weight on the weight side of the telescope all you have to do is push up the weights on on the counterweight bar a little bit if the telescope is actually heavy and the weights are kind of not heavy enough on the weight side you need to push down the weights a little bit so that you get a little bit more balancing act 
Now, on the deck axis side, you have no weights. All you have is a telescope that is sitting on the mount. When you release the deck axis clutch, and if you notice the telescope is either front heavy or back heavy, then if it is front heavy, you are going to push down or move it down the telescope from the mount a little so that your telescope is now balanced. If the telescope is back heavy, you are going to push it up a little to make sure the telescope is properly balanced. You may want it to spend 5 to 10 minutes or even more to make sure that these two activities are properly done. This is a crucial step for you to get a very good guiding. Step 6. Make sure to do a good cable management so that all your cables that are coming from your cameras, your telescope and all are properly tied and there are no loose cables. It helps you reduce the cable snag when your telescope is moving on the mount and also when it is guiding there is no flexure in the total imaging system. So step 7, perform a very good polar alignment procedure. Whether you use a polar scope or sharp cap, make sure you perform a good polar alignment. I have a detailed video about polar alignment. Please check that one if you have any questions. This is another crucial step for you to get good guiding. Step number 8. Make sure you perform a 2 star alignment and a 4 star calibration alignment of your mount. The first star is a bit difficult to get. We just completed the first star and the second star kind of you get very close already on your screen. The third, fourth and fifth stars are fairly easy to get in your image on your screen already. So this is star number 3 and star number 4 would be pretty close. It's up to you if you want to do star number 5 and 6. So by performing this routine, you should be able to get a very good go-to tracking and also a good tracking on your mount. This is one another crucial step for you to get good guiding. You need a good go-to and good tracking in order to have a good guiding. Step 9 is to check your guide camera alignment with your main imaging camera alignment. Orion star shoot and when I go to that camera, my guide camera should show the star that I was looking in my main imaging camera in the center as well. Typically you do this during the day with some light pole or something. But in the night time, you may want it to double check your alignment if it is okay. If not, make sure you turn those a little adjustment screws on your guide scope to make sure they are properly aligned. Right now, it's kind of, you can see, it's a little bit off. So, while I was doing it, there is an aeroplane going away. Okay, so, I'll make a minor adjustment to it. You don't need to be perfectly precise to make sure that it is correct. But, as long as you are pretty close to the center, in the guide camera as well, your polar alignment that you just performed is now almost the same or in sync with your guide camera as well. That was the idea. You don't want guide camera to have a different uh, position uh, visually in the center. So I'm trying to put it in the center.
Step number 10. Open up Stellarium software and find a star close to the equator. So open up your Stellarium software and then press the dot on the keyboard. The dot on the keyboard essentially open up your equator line, right? That's a keyboard shortcut. So this is the equator line. It goes from east to west. So you may want to find a star that is close to the equator, which is a little bit bright enough. You don't need to go too far. I think they give you like plus or minus 10 or 20 degrees or something. Somewhere in this vicinity of equator, like one of these or one of these stars would be better like to find. The reason why you are trying to find these stars is you wanted to navigate to these stars before you start your PhD. You wanted to guide on one of these stars and do calibration on one of these stars before you start your PhD guiding. So it's better to perform guiding calibration on one of these stars close to the equator line. So right now I'm picking one of these stars here. You can use your uh, mount's hand controller to find that star, navigate to that star. If you don't find that in the hand controller, you can also use Tellurium to connect to your mount and let mount be navigated by the Tellurium as well. So connect your mount and the guide camera with the profile that you created in the PHD2 software. Once you connect, there is a little refresh button there. When you click on that, it will start looping for a star. So right now, I put like two seconds there, like to refresh interval. And that little slider is going to show you bright or less. So you, right now I'm like, I don't want to be too bright. So I just reduced a little bit. But you can see stars in the image frame there for you to guide. Okay, I go to tools and then auto select star. So that's the star that I wanted to guide on. It selected the star and then I use the shift on my keyboard which will force it to calibrate when I press that green button. I am fighting with some clouds in that area but I should be able to calibrate quickly and move out of that area. So it completed the calibration and it started guiding. So it is guiding with a 0 0.25, 0 0.22 kind of error, RMS error right now. As you can see in that total RMS error. That's what you wanted to go after. You wanted to make sure it is below 0 0.5 RMS error. I think that's ideal. I let it guide a little bit longer just to see the RMS error and how it is doing. It's a little bit hazy out there. But still, since the star is too bright, it kept guiding. Step number 12, so this is the last step. Go to Guiding Assistant, go to Tools and then Guiding Assistant. This will stop the guiding output. This will be typically like 120 seconds. And once the Guiding Assistant is done, let me fast forward. And if you stop it, it is going to do what we call uh, backlash measurement. And that typically takes another few minutes. You need to look at your polar alignment error. It's like one arc minute. I mean, below 10 arc minutes is fine. That's what PhD tells you. But I think below one arc minute or one arc minute, you should be able to get a good guiding. So now it is doing the backlash measurement. Why you are doing this guiding assistant is you see that behind the guiding assistant screen, 
you see the RA, the hysteresis, the minmo and all. I believe once this is done, when you click apply, it does most of those changes for you. Check the backlash graph. This is just a visual graph, how it should be. Okay, so I started guiding again. I just clicked on the loop button and I auto selected the star. It's still hazy, but it's still going. Target the Orion Nebula, which is what I'm trying to take a picture of. So I'm making sure the guiding is going okay. I think it started showing like 0 0.28, 0 0.25 and all. So I let it guide there. I have to stop guiding and I need to go to my target and then start guiding again. So I went to my target, started guiding and I'm dithering as well for every three images if I'm right. And it kept the guiding somewhere in the 0.3 to 0.5 kind of RMS error. I hope this video is helpful for someone who is looking for having a good PhD guiding. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Clear skies.